Because even though this date was established uh, to wipe out the Jewish people, God had other plans. Amen. A young Jewish girl would be the heroine of our story. She is first called by, the, by her Hebrew name, Hadassah, as we find in Esther chapter 2, verse 7. But she is called by her Persian name, Esther, throughout the rest of the story. Now here is what Esther 9.28 says about observing for them. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Now, uh, anybody know uh, the Hebrew word for scroll? Megillah. A Megillah. Okay, so what is a Megillah? No, not the gorilla. But thank you for helping me along. Uh, a Megillah is actually the Hebrew word for scroll. And this is what uh, a Megillah of Esther uh, might look like. And we read the Megillah of Esther at Purim actually from beginning to end, which is where an expression, the whole Megillah, uh, comes from, if you've ever heard that expression. According to Esther 9, verse 22, the Jewish people are instructed to send portions to one another and gifts to the poor at this time. Now, today, most of the gift giving has been moved to Hanukkah to complete, to complete, to compete with Christmas. Uh, and here we have a picture uh, of what some Jews uh, call a Hanukkah bush, but at one time, it would have been more, accurate, more accurately called a Purim bush. Many Jewish people still give gifts to the poor at Purim, and we are providing an offering box in the fellowship area uh, for giving to a ministry that we've supported for several years now uh, in Belarus for victims of the Holocaust. Um, and so we encourage you to seek the Lord uh, as to whether he would have you to participate in this offering uh, if you desire to do so, you can write Purim in the memo of a check or on the outside of an envelope if giving cash and put it in the offering box in the fellowship area. Um, it's also traditional at Purim to tell the events of the book of Esther in a uh, play or uh, often in a humorous way. Uh, and this is often called a Purim spiel. Uh, which is uh, a Yiddish word that means story. Also, uh, humorous skits are performed, uh, similar to our No Talent show uh, that we will be having at the end uh, of our service this evening. Our humor is based on our ability to laugh in the face of tragedy because we know that we will continue to survive as God's people no matter how bleak things may look and no matter how cruel the persecution. Today, this holiday has become a time, uh, particularly in Israel, of dressing up in costumes and wearing masks. Another Purim tradition is to have a carnival uh, to raise money for charity. Now, to tell you a little bit more about um, the, the events that uh, set the scene or set the stage for uh, our observance, the Jewish people were told in Deuteronomy 25, verses 17 through 19, that they were to blot out all memory of Amalek from under heaven because Amalek lay in wait for the people as they were on their way to Sinai to receive the Torah. The rabbis tell us that the villain of Purim is thought to be a descendant of Amalek because his father is described as an Agagite in Esther chapter 3, verse 1. Agag, Agag, in the Hebrew, if you'll remember, was a king of the Amalekites who was killed by King Saul. Therefore, it is traditional that whenever the name of Haman is mentioned... During the telling of the story, we drown out the name with booing and use noisemakers called groggers. Also, lighthearted songs are sung that help us remember the story, as we will do later this evening. And as with most Jewish holidays, 
There is a food that is eaten primarily at this time. Uh, it's called humantashen. Say that together. Humantashen. Uh, it's a three-cornered cookie with a fruit filling in the middle. Uh, Kumantashen is a Yiddish word that literally means Haman's pockets. Uh, and the pastry is during the telling of the story. And the pastry is shaped like uh, the three-cornered hat that the villain of the story traditionally wears. Throughout the book of Esther, we find a number of instances of duplication. In Esther 2, verse 10... And again in chapter 2, verse 20, we are told that Esther has kept her identity as a Jewish girl hidden. Even in Esther's most famous line, there's repetition, right? If I perish, I perish. We also find that Esther repeats her request to have Haman's ten sons hanged, thank you, hanged in Esther chapter 9, verses 12 and 13. Perhaps this is connected to an event that occurred on October 1st, 1946, which also happened to be the 21st of Tishrei on the Hebrew calendar in the year 5707. And it is on this day, uh, uh, Hoshana, uh, yeah, Hoshana Rabbah, the seventh day of Sukkot, uh, according to Jewish tradition, the 21st of Tishrei, when the judgments for the coming year are sealed. And on this day in 1946, 11 Nazi war criminals were scheduled to be hanged following the Nuremberg war trials. But several hours before he was to be hanged, Hermann Goering committed suicide in his cell. Therefore, 10 men were hanged uh, that day. Uh, as recorded in this October 1946 edition of Newsweek magazine. It says, only Julius Stryker went without dignity. He had to be pushed across the floor, wild-eyed and screaming, Heil Hitler. Mounting the steps, he cried out, and now I go to God. He stared at the witnesses facing the gallows and shouted, Purim Fest, 1946. And a couple of years ago, I came across a website that provides even more evidence that the Nazi executions in 1946 could be a fulfillment of Esther's request. This information is based on something called ELS, equidistant letter sequencing, of which I was initially skeptical, but I've shown several examples in the past that are way too complicated to have come about by purely random chance. Here is the Hebrew of Esther chapter 8 verse 3 through chapter 9 verse 27, arranged with 216 letters per line. And we get the 216, that's actually six cubed. Um, and so that's one reason that they come up with that number. Now, uh, let's see how we do. Oh yeah, this works up here. Right here in the white on red, um, white uh, print on a red background, it says the 21st of Tishrei, the Hebrew date of the Nazi executions. 5707 is found in the dark blue on light blue. I didn't look at these in advance, so um, I kind of know that it's right here and right there and right there. Um, <clears throat> and yellow on green is the Hebrew word for hanged, which is right here. Um, because the trials were conducted by a military tribunal, the death sentence should have been carried out by firing squad. Gehring, in fact, requested it, but it was seen as more humiliating to not treat them as soldiers and execute them by hanging. We also see the Hebrew in this layout for the number 10, uh, the Hebrew for sons of Haman, Nazi, Aryan, and Amalekite. You can boo the ELS. I'm just telling you what's on there. <laughs> Remember, the Jewish people had just come out of the Holocaust, and the question many of them were asking was, where was God? So these events could have been a sign to the Jewish people that the hand of God can still be seen working even after the horrors of the Holocaust. And less than two years later, on May 14, 1948, the nation of Israel is reborn, fulfilling numerous prophecies that the Lord would reestablish the Jewish people once again in the land of promise. Now, uh, I'm going to conclude this teaching with the traditional Purim greeting 
Chag Purim Sameach. Good evening, and welcome to AOMC Evening News, coming to you live from the kingdom of Akash Berash, stretching from India to Ethiopia. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. In our top story this evening, the queen has been dethroned. King Akash Berash has stripped Queen Vashti of her crown and royal title. Our reporter, Paige Turner, is on the scene at the palace in Shushan with details. Paige? I'm standing outside the palace where sources have told me that Queen Vashti was dethroned after she refused to appear before the king when she was summoned. It is not yet clear whether the summons was a proper one or whether the queen's response was an appropriate one. The series of events that led to this decision started a little over six months ago when the king decided to give an elaborate 180-day banquet for all of the princes and nobles of Persia and Media. This was followed by a seven-day banquet of drinking and revelry for everyone in Shushan. Queen Vashti hosted a week-long banquet for the women at the same time. Anonymous sources tell AOMC News that the king appeared to be a bit inebriated when he summoned Queen Vashti to come and show off her beauty. She responded with a flat-out refusal and some talk of an equal rights amendment which got her banished from the king's presence. I'll keep you posted as this story unfolds. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Paige. The king's advisors have announced a search throughout the kingdom for all the beautiful virgins to compete in a contest to replace Vashti as Queen of Media Persia. So, if you're a beautiful young woman and you want to become queen, or even if you don't, expect the Shushan Secret Service at your door soon. That's the story we have so far. We'll be back with you all the news tomorrow night. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. I can't believe it has fewer calories and less fat. I can't believe it's low in sodium and cholesterol. Oh, I can't believe it's made with simple ingredients. I can't believe it's not goat cheese. I can't believe we keep saying I can't believe. Oh, this is But funny. I can't believe it's not goat cheese. Well, neither can I. It makes a great snack for every time of the day. Sitting in your tent. You know, riding on your camel, you know, whatever. But really, but really, I can't believe it's not goat cheese. Well, just like regular goat cheese, it has great taste and zero artificial ingredients. Look for it in your local marketplace. It's time to believe. Welcome to the AOMC Evening News, where our motto is, when news breaks, we fix it. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. Of course, the big news tonight is the coronation of a new queen. She has a beautiful face and figure. Plus, she beat out 
hundreds of others in a complex year-long competition to become the new queen of media Persia. Her name is Esther. Our sports and leisure reporter, Jim Nassium, has the details on that, as well as the latest in sports. Jim? Thanks, Cole. In the Shushanopolis 500, Mimikon Andretti drove the Persian fried chicken Palace Depot dromedary to an impressive victory over the favorite Tarshish Earnhardt on the Kingdom Express, Best Barter Camel, and a field of 27 others. And don't forget that the festivities will soon be underway, leading up to next week's rivalry showdown between the University of Persia Gamecocks and the Ethiopia Tigers. But today, everyone's attention is on the coronation of the new queen, and the competition to be chosen has been fierce. The process started a year ago when all of the attractive, eligible young women in the kingdom were brought to the palace house of the women. They were then put through a year of beauty treatments, culminating with an interview with the king. Everyone seems pleased with his choice because Queen Esther is not only beautiful, but you were told she is liked by everyone who meets her. Esther's banquet is about to begin, so I'll send it back to you in the studio. In an unrelated story, a Jewish man named Mordecai has been seen walking back and forth at the gate of the palace every day for a year. There is plenty of speculation as to what his interest might be, but no one seems to know for sure. In breaking news, two of the king's guards, Bigton and Teresh, have been arrested and sentenced to hanging after it was discovered they planned to assassinate the king. The Persian Bureau of Investigation credits this same Mordecai with tipping them off to the plot. Well, that's our news for tonight, and now a public service announcement. One of the most common, tempting, and deadly distractions for teen drivers is scrolls. Reading or writing a scroll while driving a camel, horse, or other animal makes you 20 times more likely to have an accident. 78% of teen girls and 57% of teen boys admit to scrolling while driving. You, as a parent, should talk to your teen about not scrolling and driving. You should also set a good example by putting away your scrolls while in control of an animal. Scrolling and driving is a deadly combination. Get your family and friends to agree to put away their scrolls while driving. Take the pledge. Save lives. Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Candy Barr. And I'm Cole Cutts. In the news tonight, Haman, Boo. Boo. the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, has been promoted by the king to the rank of prime minister. Haman Boo. says that he plans to enrich uranium for peaceful purposes only. He says he has no plans to build weapons and nuke Israel. The king has commanded that everyone bow to Haman. Boo. One of the Jewish men, Mordecai, has refused to bow to him, which makes him furious. Servants of the king tell us, off the record, that Haman Boo. has decided to simply get rid of Mordecai. Our investigator reporter, Robin Banks, has more on this. Robin? Thanks, Cole. AOMC News has learned that when Haman Boo. discovered that Mordecai was Jewish, he determined to extend his extermination plan to include all the Jews. He cast lots, or poor, to decide what day to carry out his plan. He even offered the king 10,000 talents of silver for the right to destroy the Jews. Sources close to the king say that he refused the money, but gave Haman Boo. his signet reign and free reign to make laws as he pleased. The first executive order written by Haman Boo. was a command to annihilate the Jews and seize all their possessions. As you can imagine, this has caused chaos and confusion throughout the city. Now back to you. Thanks, Robin. In light of this and the recent assassination plot against the king, there is a growing faction among the king's advisors who are calling for new sword control laws. This has been countered by the leader of the National Sword Association, who says that his group will fight for the, the right of the people to bear swords. 
Like most of the Jewish people, Mordecai, the man who has been seen daily at the king's gate, has torn his clothes and been sitting in sackcloth and ashes, fasting and wailing bitterly. Feeling that sackcloth was not appropriate attire to sit at the king's gate, Queen Esther responded to this by sending her servant Hatak to Mordecai with a coupon for Joseph A. Bank so that he could buy one robe and get another robe, two cloaks, two headdresses, and a belt free. Mordecai refused her offer and sent her a copy of the executive order regarding the destruction of the Jews. For more on this story, we'll go to our palace correspondent, Justin Time. Justin! An unidentified source at the palace told AOMC News that a series of messages has been passed between Queen Esther and the Jew Mordecai through her servant, Hatach. In one message, Mordecai appeared to Je Esther to go to the king and beg him to save the Jewish people. Esther informed Mordecai that such an act would be by law means certain death, but the king did not want to see her. This was followed by an ominous message from Mordecai suggesting that Queen Esther, who was also in danger in living in the palace surrounded by the Secret Service, and that this was perhaps the reason that she was chosen to be the queen for such a time as this. He also expressed his conviction that if she refused, she would not survive, but the Jews would be saved by some other means. My source tells me that this was followed by Queen Esther telling Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Shushan, Shushan and fast from food and drink for three days, and that she and her maidens would do the same. Afterwards, she said she would go to the king. She entered a communication with him with a curious statement, quote, and if I perish, I perish, end quote. It seems that there's much uncertainty in Shushan these days. Back to you, Cole and Candy. Thanks, Justin. Well, that wraps up the news this evening. This afternoon, I had a chance to sit down and talk with Zeresh, the wife of the new prime minister. Be sure to join me tonight at 8 for my exclusive interview. Here are some excerpts from that conversation. Zeresh, your life must be quite chaotic since you found out that your husband has been given such a big promotion. How did you react when you suddenly found yourself in the role of the wife of the Prime Minister? The King has ordered that everyone bow to your husband, yet there are those who refuse, refuse to obey this order. Does all of this controversy make walking down the street with Haman Boo. a bit awkward? Your husband has been described as an anti-Semite. He has allegedly offered the king 10,000 talents of silver to be allowed to annihilate all the Jews in the kingdom. Do you share his anti-Semitic views? Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. In our top story, Queen Esther risked her life today after three days of fasting by going in to see the king without being summoned. Thankfully, the king was glad to see her and extended his gold scepter so that she could approach him without being killed. We are told that he offered her half the kingdom, but she settled for having the king and Haman Boo. join her for a banquet where she simply asked them to join her for a second banquet tomorrow. Haman? Boo. Boo! Left the banquet feeling pretty special about his wealth, status, and position until he encountered Mordecai, whose continued refusal to bow to Haman Boo. Boo. caused his happiness to turn into fury. Haman Boo. went home and on the advice of Zeresh, his wife, and a number of his friends decided to have a 75-foot gallows built and asked the king for permission to hang Mordecai on it. This would allow him to enjoy the banquet with the king and queen and restore his happiness. We'll be back tomorrow with all the news. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Are you looking for a licensed, bonded, and insured contractor who can remodel an old gallows or build you a new one? Do you want a reputable company who takes pride in doing a job right? Someone you can count on to be on time and get the job done? Well, look no further than Ernest and Julio Gallows Makers. We can build from your plans or you can choose one of our popular designs. We build gallows, 
or any other type of structure, simple or elaborate, residential or commercial. No job is too large or too small. Our gallows are sturdy and our nooses are strong. Remember, Ernest and Julio Gallows Builders will leave you hanging. Welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Candy Barr. And I'm Cole Cutts. In the news, a surprise parade and other special honors in Shushan today. Our weather reporter, April Showers, is on vacation. So May Flowers is here with the weather and some details on this story. May? Well, the weather throughout the kingdom is the same as always. Partly cloudy, partly sunny, cold in the mountains, hot in the desert, with occasional sandstorms, and always bad for my hair. But it was a beautiful day for a parade in Sushan today, and that's just what we had. Prime Minister Heyman Boo. was leading Mordecai throughout the streets of Sushan on one of the king's horses, shouting, This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Mordecai was wearing one of the king's robes and had a royal crown on his head. The king's press secretary announced this morning that the king was ill last night. There was no further information as to the nature of his illness just that he had a sleepless night. During the night, the king called for a servant to read the chronicles, the record of his reign, to him as a form of sleep therapy. On hearing the account of how Mordecai had saved his life by reporting the assassination plot, the king was surprised to discover that Mordecai had never been rewarded. Another source in the palace told us off the record that Haman Boo. came Boo. in to ask the king's permission to hang Mordecai on the gallows he had built. The king took that opportunity to ask Haman's opinion Boo. on how to honor someone. It is rumored that Haman Boo. thought he was the one to be honored, so he suggested a grand parade, but he ended up putting on a parade with Mordecai as the honoree. After the parade, we are told that Haman Boo. was escorted to the second banquet with Queen Esther and the king. Back to you in the studio. Well, it's been quite a day for honorees in Shushan. Indeed it has, and that's the news for this evening. We'll leave you with a word from one of our sponsors. Imagine being run over by a reckless donkey. Imagine being injured by a runaway horse or camel. Imagine being laid up for a while and not able to work. I was in just such an accident. I had a huge bill for herbs, plaster, and doctors, and the other drivers refused to pay. It wasn't my fault. I didn't cause the accident. I called Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, and they got me the coinage I deserved, and they'll see to it that the other drivers pay for your fair amount so you can relax and get well. Imagine that. It just was that easy at Dewey's, Cheatham, and Howe. They're looking out for you. Call 1-800-MY-MONEY today for a free case review. It won't cost you a thing. Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. In a shocking turn of events that rocked the government today, Prime Minister Haman Boo. was hanged. Queen Esther revealed that she was Jewish and Mordecai was named as the new Prime Minister. However, the shock quickly turned to rejoicing. Now standing by at the palace with more on the story is our reporter at large, Jay Walker. Jay? Thanks, Cole. As you know, the Prime Minister joined the King and Queen for a second banquet, where it is rumored that the King offered Queen Esther up to half the kingdom. My sources tell me that she asked that she and her people, the Jewish people, be spared from death. When the King asked who was trying to kill her, she pointed to Haman <laughs> and exposed his evil plot. At that point, we are told that the king stormed out of the room, and when he returned, Haman <laughs> was falling into the queen, begging for his life. The king was furious at what he had saw as an attempt to assault on his wife. Arbona, one of the king's servants, pointed out that Haman <laughs> had a 75-foot gallows built so that he could hang Mordecai, who had saved the king's life. 
The king then ordered that Haman Boo. be hung on his own gallows. The king's press secretary announced this morning that Mordecai, who happened to be Queen Esther's cousin and foster father, has been named as the new prime minister and given the signet ring, which was taken from Haman. Boo. He also confirmed that Queen Esther is Jewish and that her real name is Hadassah. The king gave Haman Boo. estate to Queen Esther and she turned it over to Mordecai. That's the story from here. Back to you. As his first act as prime minister, Mordecai issued an executive order to every province and in every language that the Jewish people would be able to arm and defend themselves against their enemies on the 13th of Adar. When the order was published, the Jewish people had a feast and a holiday to celebrate. Well, today has been an exciting day for news. We'll keep you updated as the events continue to unfold. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Do I have a deal for you? While I shop all over the country, it's time to save at Hammett's Swindles Camelot. Right now, zero down delivers on all new mammals and all pre-owned animals are priced to move. If you're in the market for a domedary camel or donkey, there's never been a better time to save. We have a huge inventory with tremendous savings. If you're looking for a Hemi, a tow package, or a luxury model, you've come to the right place. We'll even buy your old mammal, no matter what its condition. We have slashed prices for unbelievable deals. So come on down to Hammock Swindles Camelot. We will not be undersold. Now, you say you're not satisfied? You want more for your money? tell you what I'm going to do. Anybody that takes delivery in the next week gets a $25 credit card that's good at Shlomo's Pizzeria. Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Candy Barr. And I'm Cole Cutts. Our top stories tonight, 500 dead in the capital of Shushan, and 75,000 dead in the rest of the kingdom. Also, the ten sons of Haman Boo. were hanged. Our judicial reporter, Lily Pond, has more on the story. Lily? The statute passed by former Prime Minister Haman Boo. provided for the annihilation of the Jews today. And as you know, the laws of the Medes and the Persians cannot be changed. However, the edict written by Prime Minister Mordecai allowed for the Jews to defend themselves. The ten sons of Haman Boo. were hanged at the request of Queen Esther. Also at the Queen's request, the Jews in Shushan were given an extension of Mordecai's edict for tomorrow. Mordecai's approval rating is high and getting higher every day. He has now declared that the 14th of Adar should be a day of feasting and gladness and sending gifts to the poor each year as a reminder to subsequent generations that they overcame their enemies on this day. The command of Queen Esther established this holiday of Purim. That's it from here. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lily. And that's our news for this evening. From AOMC Evening News, I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. In name of